Hey guys, welcome to this interesting session on Salesforce Workflow versus Process Builder. Now both Workflow and Process Builders are used to automate some actions in Salesforce. Although both of these are used for the same automation purpose, there are quite some difference between them. So in today's session, we'll be talking about the difference between Workflow and Process Builder. But before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. So we'll start the session by understanding what is Workflow in Salesforce and what is Process Builder in Salesforce. Then we'll talk about the difference between them and when to use what. And guys, if you like our video, do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss an update from the Edureka channel. Also, if you're looking for an online training certification in Salesforce, check out the link given in the description box below. Now moving on to your first topic, what is Workflow in Salesforce? Well, Workflow in Salesforce is a business logic engine which basically allows you to define some rules which will automate certain actions when a particular criteria or a condition is met. In simple words, Workflow performs some automated actions when a particular criteria or a condition is met. So now for creating a workflow, we need two main things. One is criteria and the other one is action. Now criteria is basically the condition that causes the workflow rules to run. If the condition is true, only then the actions are automatically performed. But if the condition is false, then the workflow rules does not apply and the actions are not performed. So there are three criteria which define when the action should run. The first one is when created. Now this criteria evaluates a workflow rule when a record is created. So when a record is created, it checks for the rule criteria and only when the rule criteria is met, it then performs the automated action. Using this option, the rules runs only once. Next is every time it is created and it's updated. Now this evaluates a workflow rules when a record is created and updated. So when a record is created and updated, it checks for the rule criteria and only when a rule criteria is met, then it performs the automated action. With this option, the rule criteria runs repeatedly as long as the rule criteria is met. After this, the last condition is when the record is created and every time it's edited to subsequently meet the criteria. Now this evaluates the workflow criteria each time a record is created or updated. This usually happens in two condition. The first case is when you create a new record, it runs the rule if the rule criteria is met. So when I say run the rule, I mean perform some automated actions. The second condition is for any updated record, it runs the rule only if the record is changed from not meeting the rule criteria to meeting the rule criteria. And with this option, the rule can run multiple times per record, but it won't run when the record edits unrelated to the rule criteria. So this was the evaluation criteria based on what the actions will be performed. Now let us see what are the different actions that can be performed with workflow rules. So firstly, there are two types of workflow actions which vary with the time these actions are executed. First, immediate actions and the next is time triggered actions. Now as both of the names suggest, the immediate actions are performed right after the criteria is met and the time triggered actions are performed after a time interval. It gives you the liberty to set a time when you want the actions to run. Then after the particular time is done, it checks for the criteria and if the criteria is met, then it performs the automated actions. So these were the variation of action based on the time they run. Now let us see what are the different automation actions that can be performed using workflow rules. So there are four automated actions in workflow. The first one is email. You can automate a workflow rule to send an email to one or more recipient when the criteria is met. Next is field update. Now field update actions let you automatically update a field value. So when a record is created or updated, you can set a criteria for field update and when a criteria is met then a particular record field automatically changes. Next, the third action is task. Now task action is basically a particular task that determines the detail of an assignment given to a specified user by an automated process. You can send a notification email to that assignee when a task is automatically assigned. But this way, he will know that he has a particular task to do. And the fourth action is outbound message. An outbound message sends information, which is basically a message to a designated endpoint, like an external service. Also, this outbound message will be in XML format. This is basically used when you integrate Salesforce with some external application, you can send an outbound message to that external application. So these were the different actions that can be performed using workflow rules in Salesforce. Now let us move on to the next topic and see what exactly is Process Builder in Salesforce? Process Builder is a point and click tool that lets you easily automate business processes and see a graphical representation of your process as you build them. Now a Process Builder consists of three main things. First is a trigger, second is a criteria node and the third is at least one automated action. Now a trigger identifies when the process should run. Next criteria which basically controls whether or not the process executes the associated actions. If the criteria is met, only then the automated actions are executed. And if the criteria is not met, then the actions are not executed. And after that, we have actions. Like workflow, even process builders have immediate actions 
which are performed right after the criteria is met and time triggered actions which are performed after a time interval. You can set a time when you want the actions to run. So there are eight different types of actions in process builder. The first one is process builder can automatically create a record of any object type when the criteria is met. Now when I say any object, it could be accounts, contacts, opportunities, lead, custom objects or anything like that. Next, it can also update any related records. Now process builder actions can not only create a record, it can also update a value of a record. Next, it can also be used to automate any quick actions like creating a record or updating a record or logging a call or something like that. The fourth action is you can invoke a process from another process. So when a particular criteria is met, then another process builder can start its functions. Next, with process builder, you can launch a flow in Salesforce. Next, with process builder, you can send an email or a custom notification to one or more recipient when the criteria is met. The seventh action is you can post to chatter with the help of process builder. And finally, the eighth action is you can submit a record for approval to someone. So this was a brief introduction about process builder in Salesforce. Now let us move on to a main topic and see some differences between them. So the first difference as we have seen before are the actions. In workflow, we can automate only four actions, which is sending an email or sending an outbound message or field update or some particular task. Whereas in process builder, we can perform eight actions. There are additional actions like creating or updating a record or you can invoke another process or launch a flow or submit a record for approval or even you can post to chatter. Another point is with process builder, you cannot send an outbound message. So to send an outbound message, you should use workflow itself. So this was one of the major difference between workflow and process builder. The second difference is that workflow does not let you control the order of your criteria. Whereas process builder lets you control the order of your criteria, which means that in process builder, you can set multiple actions. Like if this criteria happens, then this action will be automated. But if the other criteria is true, then the other actions are performed. So there is a particular order in which the actions are executed. But in workflow, there is no way to determine which order workflow rules will run in. So there is always a chance of one rule overriding the actions another rule did. Just to give an example for this, if we set two workflow rules on one object to update a field, we would not know which workflow rule will be executed first and which will be executed second. But with process builder, we will know when exactly the automated actions will be executed as it is quite systematic. So this was the second difference between workflow and process builder. The next difference is that workflow can only update some fields on a parent record of a master detail relationship or a parent child relationship. Whereas in process builder, you can update any field on any related records. So these were some of the major differences between workflow and process builders. Another difference is process builder helps you automate business processes using graphical representation, but workflow doesn't have any graphical representation. So these were some of the major difference between workflow and process builder. So now let us understand when you can use workflow and when you can use process builder. First talking about workflows, you can use workflow if there is a single if then statement to be evaluated. Like if a criteria is met, then an action is performed. Next, you can use workflow if the automation as a result of sending an outbound message, which is not possible in process builder. The next point is you can use workflow if all five process builder flows have already been utilized. So we can only set five process builder flows. If you have exhausted the limits, then you can use workflows. Next, coming to process builders, you can use process builders if the first set of criteria is not met and another set of criteria needs to be evaluated. You can set multiple criteria and actions in process builder. The next thing is you can use process builder if you want information to be sent to a flow or if you want to post to chatter. The next point is you can use process builder if you want any quick actions to be performed and if you want records to be created or records related to the original records to be updated. So these were certain situations when you need to choose workflows and when you need to choose process builders. Now process builder can be thought of as an enhancement of workflow. So with this, we have come to the end of the session. I hope it was helpful. Do leave your valuable thoughts in the comment section below. Happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.